Hello, everyone. Good evening, and welcome to the maiden edition of the Investing GH webinar. My name is Eric Bainiapo, a partner at Investing GH, and tonight we hope to inform and educate you on how to buy stocks in Ghana. Um, a brief introduction about what Investing GH is. Investing GH is a leading online community providing in depth coverage and analysis of the Ghanaian financial markets, covering a wide range of topics from business finance, banking, technology, trading and lifestyle, and more. To join our ever-growing community, please log on to www.investinggh.com or subscribe to our Facebook, WhatsApp, and YouTube channels for more relevant information about the finance markets. Tonight on our topic, we are honored to have the General Manager of SIC Brokerage Limited, Mr. Seth Afori. Before I leave it to our speaker, we're streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. And whilst the presentation is ongoing, you can ask questions in the chat room or raise your hand using the button to be connected to Mr. Ofori to ask any questions you have about finance. Um, a little introduction about our speaker. Mr. Seth Ofori is licensed by the Ghana Stock Exchange and the Securities and Exchange Commission as a dealer in securities on the Ghanaian Post. He is a member of the Ghana Stock Brokers Association and the Chartered Institute of Bankers. He holds an MBA in Banking and Finance from the Parry Graduate School of Management and a bachelor's degree in Banking and Finance from the University of Ghana, He also holds a banking, he also holds a certificate in domestic debt management in West Africa. Prior to joining SIC Financial Services, Mr. Ofori was an Associate Vice President of IC Securities Limited responsible for heading the brokerage department, having previously worked with SDC Brokerage Services as an authorized dealing officer. As a licensed dealer with several years of experience, he initiated and executed numerous block trade worth millions of Ghana CDs on the Ghanaian news on behalf of both local and foreign international newspapers. He is an avid writer of stock market articles in both local and international newspapers and magazines. We are privileged to have this fine gentleman educate us on this topic. Without much ado, I'd like to hand over the presentation to Mr. Ofori. Thank you, Eric. And um, it's indeed a privilege to have an interaction with, with everybody who is connected on this call this evening. And um, I must express my profound appreciation to the team at Invest Ghana who have put this together. Indeed, um, it's a fine opportunity for us to discuss these issues that have to do with investment or investing on our stock market. And especially having joined from wherever you are, it tells us that COVID after all has a positive side of it. And it's making it possible for us to have this interaction at the comfort of your location. So we thank everybody that have sacrificed time to be with us this evening. There couldn't have been a better time to discuss this than this because um, we've seen how institutions are struggling and how people are being laid off, how institutions are not able to raise enough money to pay their workers but people who have some savings, some investment to lay back on, are uh, not feeling the pinch so much, even if they do not have a job at the moment. So it's a good time to talk about investing, especially on our stock market. Now, we are very much aware that investor confidence has taken a deep because of the financial crisis or because of the, the turbulence that hit our financial industry last year. And so people are really skeptical when you talk about they putting some money aside or they do some investment. So it is, it is appropriate that we address this issue here and related to the stock market. Investing is, or through the stock market is very simple. So we'll try to break it down for all of us to appreciate and where there are questions, we'll address them. When we talk about the stock market, basically it's a market. 
And when we talk about market, it means there's a seller, there's a buyer. So once there, there's a connecting instrument that put the two together, and there's exchange of instrument and there's exchange of money, then you know that's a, a market. So stock market is, is the same. And we call it stock because we bought the word from the Americans. If you say shares, then it's, it's, it's a word we are borrowing from the British. So we can use it interchangeably. They mean the same thing. Shares or stocks, they mean the same thing. We just use them interchangeably. And we borrow stocks from, from the US. And then uh, we borrow shares also from the British. Now, today, we are talking about the stock market. And issues to do with the stock market, we need to understand that. Then we are talking about a secondary market. When stocks or when companies are doing what we call initial public offer, the IPO, or where they are floating their shares in the public, then that is a primary market. In a primary market, you do not have a buyer because the issuing institution is selling directly to you. So you are buying the instrument or the shares from the company that have issued those shares. And the company is selling them directly to you. If you want your money back, then you have to look for a buyer yourself, or you go back to the company and say, you are no longer interested. And so if you have someone who's interested, they should link you up. So basically, when shares are being floated in the IPO, um, stage that is a primary market. After the flotation, we can use MTN as an example. When MTN, MTN did their public offering, we saw people there a lot of advertisements and people were being required to or being asked to buy the shares, you know, to save in their future. So that was a primary market. Later, those shares got listed on the stock exchange. Once it's listed on a stock exchange, then you have an exit window. So that having held the shares for a while, if you want to exit, then you have to go through the process of selling the shares to whoever is interested in those shares. And you do that not by yourself going to the stock exchange to sell it, but we'll tell, I'll tell you what the process requires very soon. But we need to establish the relationship between the primary market and the secondary market. So when we are talking about the stock exchange, then again, we are talking about secondary markets. Now, shares that exchange hands on the secondary market are not shares that are not coming from the company. They are already issued shares that are in circulation. So companies list a certain number of issued shares on the stock market. And those are the shares that are available to you know, exchange hands. So if you are buying shares on the stock market, you are buying it from an existing shareholder who is no longer interested in the shares, but has because it has interest and wants liquidity, or that's no reason for what, this is why he wants to expose, dispose of those shares. And so you as a buyer, you should have it at the back of your mind that you are not buying the shares from the company, but you are buying it from existing shareholder who or existing investor who is no longer interested in holding the instrument. So now we have established what the stock market is. We've also established how you end up buying shares through the stock market. But again, one basic fact we have to consider is the fact that stock market is a segment of the financial market. The financial market is segregated into two. So we have the capital market, which is a part of the, uh, which is which a stock market is a part of, and then we have the fixed income market. Fixed income market, those, that's the area where you buy treasury bills and instruments that have the resemblance of treasury bills. So you have a fixed dated instrument, and those are normally for short term. But when you come to the other segment of the market, is what we call the capital market, and stock market is under the capital market. And so those ones are long dated investment instruments. And when we say long dated, that's long, long term, anything from two years could be described as long term. 
on the Ghanaian market or Ghanaian stock market, I'm sure you, you, you might have heard a lot about the Ghana Stock Exchange already. It was established in July 1989 and started trading in shares or started um, operations in 1990. But currently, we have 35 listed companies and we have two mechanisms that we use to measure performance of the listed stocks. And these are indices that are used to measure the performance. So we have the Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index, and we have the Ghana Stock Exchange Financial Instruments Index. Those are the two indices that we use to measure the performance of stocks on the market. And as, as, at, as at now, or as at Friday, your know, Friday was a holiday, as at Thursday, what we call the market capitalization of the stock exchange was 52.7 billion Ghana cities. What it means is that when you value all the shares that are being traded on the Ghana stock exchange, or all the shares that are on the market, you know, the value of all the shares on the market as of Thursday was 52.7 billion Ghana cities. So well, these are some indices to tell you what we are doing on the stock market. And it's a market that opens from 9.30 a.m. and closes at 3 p.m. on each working day. So between those hours, shares could be traded on the market for you. Now, when you are investing in stocks, you should have it at the back of your mind that you are putting money away. Money that you want to see, you know, grow or multiply. So when there's time for you to assess those money, you should be able to assess them and make it. But again, you know, everything we do in this life, there's some amount of risk that is involved. So investment in stocks is not risk-free. It's a high risk area. And in investment, we say the higher the risk, the bigger the returns. So with a long term, we expect high returns on our investment in stocks, but again, we should know that it's risky. But well, we, over time, we can, you can see the effects of the risk that you are willing to assume. And when we are doing investments, too, we try to minimize we can't get rid of the risk. We can't, we can't do without the risk, but we can only help to minimize the amount of risk that you will be able to accept. And we thought, I already mentioned that the stock market started operating in 1990. Now, assuming that you had invested 100 Ghana cities on the day of inception of the stock market, and you, you did not touch the 100 Ghana cities, from that time to date, you would have been, you know, your money would have grown to 23,741.67 Ghana cities. This is only to give you a fair idea of what investment for a long period of time can, can return. Now, let's go into how you can, you can benefit when you buy shares. You benefit from part of the returns or the profits of the company whose shares you have purchased. So the first one is dividend income. And then the other one is what we call capital gain. These are the two direct benefits that you can have as somebody who has bought shares through the stock exchange. Dividend income, which is part of the company's annual profit that has been set aside to share among people who have shares or stocks in that company. Now, capital gains are also the uh, the appreciation of the market of the or the stock of the instrument you take your cost from it what is left for you is your capital gain so if you take the cost price from the selling price the difference is your capital gain so if you have a gain then the opposite of gain is a loss so you can have a capital loss that is where your selling price becomes less than your purchase price. So the opening price as against the closing price, the difference is what can be described 
as your um, capital gain or capital loss. Now, when you go into the stock market to do a transaction or you have shares or you want to buy shares, you cannot walk directly to the stock exchange to say, I have some money and I want to buy it. No, you have to go through some people who we call stock brokers. So these are people who are licensed by the Securities and Exchange Commission and also licensed as traders by the Ghana Stock Exchange. So you need to have obtained a license or a certificate from the Securities and Exchange Commission as a broker dealer. And that certificate or that license could qualify you to obtain a broker license from the Ghana Stock Exchange. The requirements are very simple. Once you have your first degree, there's a, a program that the Ghana Stock Exchange runs. You go through that program. Once you've passed all the, the, the papers there, then you are eligible you know, for licensing by the Securities and Exchange Commission. So that's the basic requirement. And you, are, you could be licensed to also come to the Stock Exchange and apply for another license. Now, you cannot do this as an individual. You need to be sponsored by a company that has the money to do. And it's only a brokerage firm that can promote you or that can sponsor you to become a stock broker. Because you cannot work in there as an individual who has obtained the training at the stock exchange to sec and say, now I have qualified for licensing and so It doesn't work that way. You have to receive, you have received training from a brokerage firm, have the necessary exposure, understand the dynamics, you know, before you be eligible for licensing to deal in securities. So this is how it is. And having received the license, now you qualify for a brokerage firm to use you as a stock broker or an authorized dealing officer. So we have a brokerage firm that we, can, we sometimes refer to as a, as a broker. Then we have the individual license holder who qualifies to trade you know, for a company as a stock broker. Now, when you want to buy shares, you go to the stock brokerage firm and one of the officers who is also licensed to give you investment advice will speak with you. So your choice of a brokerage firm needs to be you know, guided by certain principles. The brokerage firm must have been licensed by the Security and Exchange Commission, as we have said, must have been authorized to trade in shares. Then they must demonstrate a high level of professionalism. Also, they should have the, the necessary infrastructure to be able to give you effective business. You know, they should be an effective business delivery company for you to be able to enjoy their services. Then that institution will provide you some additional services, although it's not mandatory, but it's an added service. If they have a research unit, it goes a long way. And that company should have had a track, good track record for good customer service for you to be able to enjoy doing business as an investor. Now, assuming you have chosen a broker or a brokerage firm, now you who have this brokerage firm doing what we call a know your customer procedure on you. So they have to go through a process of creating an account for you and discuss your investment objective. You, they need to know how much you have set aside to do the investment into the stocks. They need to know your risk appetite. They need to know your investment horizon. How long do you want to put this money in investment? They need to know all this. And I ask you a few other questions just for them to know what to recommend and what not to recommend. Having talked to you, if they feel that you do not have the appetite for the stock market, a good broker or a good investment advisor would let you or inform you that having listened to your investment objective, they do not feel that stock market is a place for you. And once you are said that in good faith, then they will recommend which other investment instrument will work out best for you. So given that you have accepted that well, everything is fine, you, you proceed, 
then you discuss the stocks that you have to or they will recommend and you as an investor will have the final say so they will give you recommended buy list defend them and then you make the decision you know to buy which stock because at the end of the day you have to complete the forms and sign thereafter you deposit your money and the brokers will go on the market to pick the stocks for you after the transaction is executed they will give you an investment advice slip which we call contract note it will give you details of the transaction the amount the number of shares that have been purchased for you the unit price the commission charges and all that it doesn't end there now you you are a, a, an investor who has bought shares you don't you need to monitor your investment okay you need to be talking to your broker from time to time you keep an eye on your investment because the stock prices are always you know fluctuating they are not stagnant and as a good investor or a rational investor you want to take advantage when the market appreciates and you want to you know again take advantage when the market drops that way you can maximize returns on your investment on the market so Hello, um, I think Mr. Ofori is having a slight challenge with this connection. So we'll have him re in and then he'll continue his presentation. Okay, um, to all our viewers, uh, before Mr. Ofori joins us again, um, okay, I think he's back on, so I'll give him back uh, his privileges. Hello, Mr. Ofori, you're back online. I'm back. I'm yes. sorry. I, that was some technological failure. Yeah, it happens. Okay, so sorry about on. that. All right, so. Um, so far we have gone through the process of you buying shares and i remember saying that you walk to a brokerage of broker the broker's office and you discuss the stocks and if i because of the um, failure if you i left something out you could bring that out in form of questions and we'll address them so again um we have to i've already mentioned what you look for when you are going to select an institution that you want to use to buy the shares for you. So we have also mentioned the benefit that um, and lead to you as, as somebody who has invested through the stock market. So we spoke about dividend income, we spoke about capital gain. Other things that need to be mentioned is the fact that it adds up to your estate. Investment in equities gives you an asset you know, if you go to a bank and pick a loan, or you buy treasury bills, you are not, uh, you are, you are, you know, um, you you have a debt instrument. Okay, it doesn't make you an owner of anything. But if you buy shares, 
in a company, you own parts of that company. As a, as so as, as, as owner of part of that company, you have the right to make your voice heard. That is the reason why companies organize annual general meetings and emergency general meetings for you to also participate in the affairs of the company as part of the owners of that company. So these are additional benefits that you enjoy as somebody who have investment on the stock market. Now, the question is how much do you need in order to be able to buy stocks? The, the laws do not tell us any minimum. So anything that you can part with, anything from 50 Ghana, 100 Ghana that you can part with could pick you or could pick some stocks for you. So um, that's how it is. And again, when you do transactions, we charge you commission or total charges amount to 1.5 to 2.5 percent. The bigger the transaction, the, um, the lesser you pay. So it ranges between 1.5 and 2.5 percent. Now, again, we have walked you through the process of buying shares. And on this note, I would rather pause here and allow you to ask your questions. And I'm sure a lot more like to be thrown into our discussions when your questions come. Okay, so um, a question from one party in the group. He, he wants to know which brokers in Ghana have an online platform where one can buy stocks directly, manage their stocks, trade, and receive dividends directly. All right, so the questions, this particular question is loaded into um, a kind of a two stuff brought together. Now, if you talk about brokers that do online transactions, the whole market is automated. So brokers trade online. We don't converge on the stock at the stock exchange to do business. We trade from the, at the comfort of our offices or anywhere we find ourselves. And it's within this COVID, we sometimes even trade from our various homes. Now, I, I guess that your question have to do with whether you'll be able to view the market live and participate in. Yes, um, as of now, I do not know of any brokerage firm that does that. But we, as I see brokerage, we are in the process of launching that. So you should, you should stay tuned. Very soon you, you'll hear about our online uh, platform. Now, dividend payment is not originated from the store broker. The store broker does not have the mandate. It's not part of our duties to pay dividend to you. That is the responsibility of the registrars of the listed company. Each listed company is mandated to have a registrar, and the registrar keeps the register of all the shareholders. And so when the dividends are declared, it's the duty of the registrar to ensure that the pay dividends are paid. So they have the register, they know the holdings of all the shareholders, so they um, effect the dividend payment to hit the account. So if you don't have your dividend, the broker can only help you to check with the registrar. Otherwise, you go directly to the registrar to find out what's going on. Okay, um, well said. Um, another question from Kweku, but before I head to Kweku, um, I'd like to tell all our participants that if you want to ask a question um, and you want us to hear you, please raise your hand in the session and I'll click you, I'll mute you, and then you can personally ask Mr. Ofori your question. Um, now, another question from Kweku, what is the minimum amount you can invest and how frequent can we buy shares? Well, um, there's no minimum, as I've already said, because um, it's not a statu statutory declaration. There's no statutory declaration that you need to have 1,000 Ghana cities, 500 Ghana cities, no. So anything from 50 Ghana cities can buy you shares. And how frequent, the market opens from Monday to Friday, provided you don't have any of those days being a holiday. So you can buy shares yesterday, you can buy shares today, you can buy shares the next day. Anytime you have money, you just approach your broker and the shares will pick for you, anytime. Okay, that's great. Um, 
So we have a constant, a do say here. Um, who wants to ask a question? So I'm going to meet her and have her chip in with what she has to say. Hello. Hello, Constance. Uh, um, good evening. Hello. Yeah, good evening. Thank you for joining. Oh, okay. Um, please, I want to ask Mr. Fori um, the question. Okay, please go ahead. Um, I, I bought shares during um, when MTN was, um, when they were sharing, uh, they were selling shares. So I bought it. And then I changed, I bought it through mobile money. So I changed my number. And then when I changed it, I went to the MTN office to change the number that I used to buy the shares. They asked me to go through brokerage before I can change it. It was like complicated. I didn't understand. Can you please explain to me? Okay, so um, you, you bought those shares in the primary market, as I have already explained. So what you do is um, later you have our contacts and see us will help you to retrieve those shares. Once you have proof of purchase of those shares, you cannot lose them. All right, so you could contact us and we'll help you to retrieve the shares. Okay, that's great. So we have another from Rachel Sula. Um, Okay, thank you very much, Invest GH. Yes, and hello. Thank you, Mr. Ofori. My question is this, Mr. Ofori made mention of the fact that um, you'd have to pay the brokers or the brokerage company some amounts between 1.5% to 2.5%. I want to know how often do you make that payment? Is this an initial payment that is made or how often are you expected to pay them? And um, with the dividends you get on your shares, how often do you, um, is that paid to you? Thank you. All right, um, those are five questions. Now, you, you only pay um, transaction charges when there's a transaction. So it's, um, it becomes one-off if it's only a one-off transaction. So it's, when you are buying the shares, we are talking about the secondary market. In the primary market, you don't pay any charges. But in the secondary market where you have to engage the services of a broker and engage, use the services of an established market, is, that's, the reason, that's the services you are paying for. So you are paying only when there's, a, there's an activity. So when you are buying the shares on the secondary market, it's at that point that we, are, we charge the commission. And again, when you are selling, you are exiting, is when we charge. So, if you, after buying the shares, you don't pay anything until you are dealing on those shares. Okay, that's how, great. You mentioned how often dividends are paid. It depends on the dividend paying policy of the institution or the company which share you, 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 you are holding. Some companies pay dividend twice a year. Some pay it once a year. So it depends on what the policy of the company is. If it's once a year payment, then you receive it only once a year. But if the company pays twice a year, then you receive what we call interim dividend, and also you receive what we call final dividend when uh, the year ends. Okay, Mr. Fori. Um, another question from Etiahene in the chat room. What can one do if the brokerage through which you purchase your stock is no longer in business? All right, it's very simple. You know, um, it's just like um, you broker, 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 the relationship between you and the broker is an, a kind of an agency agreement. You are using the broker to perform a certain service after which the broker's relevance is not really necessary in, in that context because if they buy the shares for you. The brokerage firm does not hold the shares. The shares are held in a depository account for you. And the depository account is held by a third party. That's the central depository company. It's, it's jointly owned by the stock exchange and the, and the Bank of Ghana. So they are the institution that holds your shares. 
And remember, I have already explained the role of the registrar, keeping the register of shareholders. So the brokerage firm comes in to perform that service. And so if the brokerage firm is no longer in business, your shares are still intact. And if you want to do any brokerage related activity, you only appoint another brokerage firm to help you transact such businesses. Okay, um, so I'll take one final question um, from this first part and then you can go ahead with your presentation, sir. Um, another question, how does an investor monitor their accounts remotely without having to visit a broker all the time? Well, um, happily, we have the media reporting on the activities of the stock market, as we say, on a daily basis. So you can monitor the share prices in the news, in the financial news. And also, some of these things are always online. You can check the share prices online. If you visit our website, you'll find our share prices. We report them live. And, and you can see the historical ones as well. So you can use this medium to be monitoring the performance of your share. And our company, we have a, a research department and they report on the market uh, twice a week, you know, midweek and end, end of week. Those ones will tell you or give you information on, on, on the particular stocks. So if you look at or you read those reports, you follow them, you will see whether your stock is doing well or not. Otherwise, feel free to call the brokerage office all the time. You can, you can call them, even send a text or send an email seeking information on a particular stock. We'll be more than willing to give you such information. Okay, wonderful. Um, the presentation, can you please go ahead? All right, so um, I could only give you our contacts because if there are no further questions then um or maybe if you think about any questions later you could always contact us for any assistance that you might require and um okay if you if you allow me to share my screen then i'll be able to give out the contacts otherwise you you can find SIC Brokerage Limited right behind the Christ the King School and in Cantonment, Accra. And our telephone numbers are 030-294-0056. 030-294-0056. Then we also have 024 817-1682. I'm repeating it. 024-817-1684. And our email address is trader, as in T-R-A-D-E-R, trader at SICbrokerage.com. Trader at SICbrokerage.com. Then also you can visit our website at SIC or www.sicbrokerage.com. Okay, great. Uh, Mr. Foy, one person just asked a very important question here. Um, how does one validate the validity of the contracts that is received from a brokerage firm? Is it possible to call the CDC or the registrar to verify that this contract is valid and that the actual purchase took place? Well, val validity of a contract, uh, you see, the, the instrument I mentioned, the name is contract note. So it, it's kind of uh, investment advice. So it's a slip that tells you details of the transaction. The, the registrar does not have um, the, what it takes to validate a contract note that a brokerage firm will give you. I have not, I have not seen a fake contract note from a brokerage firm anyway, but you can always check with a stock exchange. If you check with the stock exchange, is better than you going anywhere else. They have records of each transaction. Now, you could also check with the securities and exchange, sorry, you can check with the, the depository company because at the end of the day, they will hold your instrument. But one thing I left out is that 
when we do transactions, if you are a seller, you receive your money not on the day of tra tra trade. You receive it after the third day. So it's a, a, a T plus three settlement cycle. When we, we buy the shares or we do a transaction on Monday, those transactions will not settle on Monday. It will settle the third day. So the trading day plus three working days. So the, th the third day or the, the, the T plus three, the third day, the instrument should be in your, you, you can be sure that the instrument is in your account, the positive account. So the CSD can give you proof of your instrument. By then, if you are a seller, then the money should be hitting your bank account or you pick up a check from the brokerage firm. So if you want to check the authenticity of what has been given you, the stock exchange can confirm and the CSD can also confirm. Those are the two institutions that can help you. Okay, um, I'd like to thank our viewers for logging in once again. And there are a lot more questions, so I urge you to keep them coming. Um, Mr. Ofori, McCaffrey on Facebook wants to know, I bought ET shares um, a long time ago. However, when the bank closed by the government, was closed by the Ghana government, I have not received a single communication on what has happened to my shares. Is there therefore a safe way to invest in Ghana going forward in similar, if similar situations come up in the future? Yes, um, we, we currently we have about 35 listed companies. And in the, the last, I should say the last five or so years, we've had about only one of such issues. And again, like I did say, whatever we do in this life uh, uh, involves a certain amount of risk. It's unfortunate that um, shareholders of UT have had to go through that, that, that experience. But again, the regulators, you know, monitor whatever the companies are doing closely. And again, as brokers that have research units, we also do a lot of analysis into the performance of these companies. And so it's an, it's, it's an unfortunate development, but it has, it has awakened all of us to, again, be on our guard when we are selecting stocks. So I should give you that confidence and assure you that we do not anticipate to have such a, a development again um, in the near future. Okay, um, we're going to take a question from Stan Inku. Hello. Hello, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Good. Uh, Mr. Ofori, thank you. Uh, you. You said that um, you are developing a platform where people will be able to trade without necessarily coming to the brokerage firm or picking a bus to your office. That's right. No. So you, you cannot you cannot assume the services of a brokerage firm. What um, the platform will uh, the access it will give you is for you to be able to have the screen of the broker and view live trading. And if you want to participate in the market, then you would have already had an account with a brokerage firm. And so if you spot a particular instrument or a particular stock you want to buy, you link up through the same medium to the brokerage firm. You can put your orders in. The orders will go to our back office for validation. Then the trader will pick that particular order and put it on the market. So you cannot just sit in the house and be trading. No, 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 no. You don't have the license to do that. But you can view live trading and link up with us when you want to participate in the ongoing. OK, OK, that's great. I, I, was, I put a question in the, in the feed that um, why can't we have individual brokers? Individual brokers, as in? Asan, because in your explanation, you, you made it clear that you need to be with a brokerage firm, undergo some training before um, you you be an ADO or someone that can trade as a broker. So because you mentioned also that you have to go through the process of 
uh, passing some exams, then the uh, SE, um, the Securities and Exchange Commission will give you some license to yes. before you can operate as a broker. So yeah. I, I want to understand why can't we have an individual who is a broker, but you have to be with a, a fund management or a brokerage firm before you can be a broker or, or okay. AD or as you said. Yeah, you, you know that um, we are talking about money, okay? So would you rather you go, you walk to um, a, the street somewhere under a shed and hand your money over to somebody who is sitting under a shed at the roadside and say it's a broker and you walk away and trust that your money is safe? I, don't, I would not do that. But I would rather prefer to walk into an institution that has a, a, a structure, you know, a world growth structure with the systems to guarantee, you know, the safety of my money. So we are talking about trust issues. We are dealing with millions of, of, of Ghana cities. So if individuals, you know, are just mandated to be doing trading here and there, the safety of people's money cannot be guaranteed. And then the control mechanisms cannot really be effective. Okay, but where we know we are dealing with institutions, then the institutions are regulated, then we have confidence in the system, better than, you know, having individuals practicing on their own, and once they vanish, how to trace your money becomes an issue. You, okay, I, I hope you, you get my point. Okay. Um, we have another party, Obed Korda. Hello. Hello, Obed. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Please Hello, go please come in. Okay, um, thank you, Mr. Ofori, for um, your submission. God bless you so much, Mr. Kanye as well. Um, my question is, um, how can you, you, um, you made mention, if I, I heard you right, you made mention that um, there's a way to mean, uh, maximize your returns when the market is up or down. So I just want you to um, help me and the other participants with, um, with that. How can you maximize your returns when the market is down? Or up. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you for bringing out that question. It's, it's a very good question you have asked. You know, uh, you can maximize returns on the market if you don't treat your your um, your investment in stocks as a marriage partner. You know, you don't need to have an emotional attachment to your, your instrument. You want to buy shares when the prices are low and sell them when the prices appreciate. That way you can enjoy good capital gain. So we monitor, you have to monitor the performance of your stock so that when the price goes up to a certain margin, then you sell and then buy the same stock when the price drops or you look for other options where the prices are, are considered to be at a, a, you know, a very low level. So you buy again, and then allow the price to appreciate, then you sell again to record your capital gain. We invest on stock because we want to make money. So that's the way you have to play around the market to maximize your profit. Okay, so we'll take another question from Esther Blackson. Um, all right, um, I am not in Ghana right now, so I'm asking, how do you guys um, go about international investments? And also, do, can you invest if you're not a Ghanaian citizen? Thank you. Well, the stock market all over the world opens up to foreigners and non-foreigners. And so if you are a foreigner and you are participating in a stock market, beyond your jurisdiction, you have to establish a relationship with a brokerage firm. Now, it's in two folds. You could use the services of a custodian or you go directly to the brokerage firm. So the service of a custodian is normally used by international uh, institutional investors. But again, they have their, their doors open 
to individual investors that are not located in Ghana. That way, when you want to do an investment on the market, you channel your investment instructions through the custodian, and you channel your money through the custodian, and trust, and, and again, bear in mind that you, you have to pay for their services. The custodians are normally uh, banks. You know, we have banks that are providing that service, custodial services. All right, so we are assuming that you are going directly to the stockbroker. Now we will give you our forms to complete. You have to take you through the know your customer procedure and have the necessary information that we need to have on record. And once we convince ourselves based on information that are made available to us that you, um, you are eligible to invest on our market, we do the KYC, create an account for you, and receive your deposit and proceed to the market to execute transactions for you. So both residents and non-residents are allowed to buy stocks on our market. Okay, so we'll take some more questions from the chat room. Um, this is from Alexis. Please, what is the index fund? And how safe is it compared to individual stocks? Do you say index fund? Yes, please, index fund. All right, so if you are talking about an index fund, is, is a fund that uh, has established based on the indexes that are, that, are, that are on the market. And so you are monitoring the performance of those, th those indexes and you, you, are, you put your money on, expecting that the indexes will appreciate so you can make some gain. That is, a, is an indirect investment. But where you do a direct investment is when you are going directly onto the market to pick stock A, B, or C as against a fund. A fund is normally a combination of other instruments that are picked directly. So we call it an indirect investment. And going to hit the market straight with your orders to buy stock A, B, or C is what we call direct investment. So the two really uh, uh, have uh, uh, some uh, differences. But again, we have on some markets, we have index, we have funds that are listed on the, on the market. That way, you are directly investing on, on that listed instrument that have components of other index, in, indices or indexes. Okay. Um, another question from Etuahene. What can one do to follow up on stocks purchased in case you lose your stock certificate? Um, well, I, I, like I have said already, you monitor the financial news and visit our website to pick the share prices. Now, if you lose your certificate, well, the thing is that uh, then you are, you are living in the past because we do not use certificates anymore. The market is completely automated. So if you are listening to me and you have a share certificate, then please uh, see, see us from on Monday so we can help you to dematerialize your instrument and put it on the depository account for you. Now, the, thing about, the good thing about shares is this. You, you can't lose your shares. Once you have proof of purchase or proof of ownership, the shares can always be traced. Even if you, you, you don't have a certificate, a so-called certificate, and you don't have a contract note, but you have something to prove that you have ever bought shares the shares can always be traced. So no cause for alarm. Okay. Um, another question, please. Can an investor tell the broker at what price they want to buy the stock? Absolutely, you can. But again, you need to price your, or your order uh, within the remits of the price movements on the market. If a stock is selling for one CD, you cannot come and tell the broker I want to buy it for 50 pesos. You really wouldn't uh, be professional. So we will advise you on how much you can. If, it's, it's, uh, if you want to buy it at a discount, we will guide you on the levels of discount that you can buy at any particular time. At the same time, if you want to sell for profit or sell above the market price, that is selling at a premium, we can guide you on how to price that one as well. Well said. Um, another question, please. In monitoring when to sell your share, when it's not doing well, is it the responsibility of the broker to control it or you can control that yourself? 
The fact is that prices on the stock market are not controlled by any individual person. They are rather, you know, controlled by the forces of demand and supply. So, you know, those are the forces that play on the stock market. And nobody can control those factors. You know, so um, if you see the direction of the market, then you take your own position. Let me put it that way. Okay. Um, okay, so we're going to hear from Michael Ma. Okay, thank you very um, much, sir. Um, um, I want to ask a question about the tax implication of buying the stocks and selling the stocks. And also, um, when it comes to the transactions, you made mention of um, T plus three, that's the trading day plus three days. So I wanted to know, is it the price as at the trading date or it the transaction will execute on the third day, which the price will be at on the third day? Okay, so um, plus three, the, the third day is a settlement day. That is where the instrument or the shares are supposed to hit your depository account and the money also hitting the account of the seller. Okay, then the first part of your question, I didn't get it clearly. Could you come again? I was saying that, um, what's the tax implication of trading? Um, okay. As an investor? Yes. All right, so um, thankfully, we do not have the capital gains tax being implemented in Ghana. So when you make returns on your investment in, in stocks, you don't, the government doesn't charge you any tax as of now. It's been, it was introduced on time, but it, it got suspended. So we are not paying any tax on your capital gains. So that's why you should be investing now. But when dividends are being paid, you pay 8% withholding tax on your dividend income. So that is only the only tax component as of now. Okay. One more question from our chat room. Um, when is it appropriate time to buy stocks? Is it a time where there has been an increase in the prices of shares? I've already explained that the most appropriate time to buy shares is when the prices are low. Because you want to buy low and sell high. So when the prices are very low, that is when to buy the shares. Don't worry if after buying the shares, you see the price drop further. Don't worry because expectations are the price will pick up over time. That's why when you're buying shares, you have to have at the back of your mind that you are doing a long-term investment. And so if we do our own analysis, you know, nobody can predict any stock market perfectly. There is no stock market in this world and we don't have any analysts that can predict the market with, any, with, with accuracy. So looking at the analysis, we can tell you that the price are low now, so it's, it's good time to buy. But by tomorrow, something could change to bring the price further down. Don't worry about it, all right? And again, if you see the price appreciating, that is not going to rush to buy the shares. It must be appreciating because maybe it's almost hitting its peak. But where you are convinced that, oh, it had just started appreciating and it will go further, then it makes sense to jump on board and, and also buy some. But where you are almost convinced that it's almost at the peak, we don't buy it at that time. If you buy it at that time, the next time it will start dropping because everybody will be happy to be taking their capital gains. And those are the factors, some of the factors that account for share price um, drops. Okay, so from Joachim, um, if the stock price is going a certain direction, can I put in an order to buy at that price so the brokerage executes it? Yeah, like I was explaining, the broker would have the, um, I mean, it's, it's all part of good customer service. The broker will advise you whether the timing to buy that particular stock is ripe or not. So you have to listen to advice. You don't just take the decision without any um, 
input or advice from the professional. So if the price is, is good to buy that stock, the broker will advise you or we will advise you. Okay, and another one from Kofi. When companies start buybacks, I refuse to sell. When they are doing buyback, there are various reasons why companies do buyback. Some do the buyback because well, for those who do not know what we are talking about, when their company, after you know, trading each shares for a while on the stock market, they want to remobilize all the shares for various reasons. Now, one of the reasons could be that they want to delist or they want to get off the market. When you refuse to sell your shares at that time, and after the exercise, the company gets delisted or moves out of the stock market, then remember that when you want to exit now, you have to look for your own buyer. But when they are on the stock market, the advantage is that anyone who wants to buy those shares will come to the stock market and buy the shares. So that is it. That, the advantage of you participating on the stock market is that there are people who are all looking on the market. But if you decide not to participate in the buyback, then you must be willing for, um, or maybe you also have your own reasons. Maybe you believe so much in the company that even if they are not on the market, you still want to hold your shares. There is nothing wrong with that, but you should know the kind of decision you are taking and live with the consequences. Okay, there's someone here who's asking a question. Um, he said he bought shares via the Gold Coast Securities, and unfortunately, because the company has also been closed. So, who does he talk to? As far as I'm aware, Gold Coast Securities, the brokerage firm is still there. They still have their brokerage um, company operating, they still have a, a valid license they are operating. But if you have the instrument and you want us to um, help you out, you can come see us from Monday and we'll be glad to, to, to serve you. Okay. Uh, another question. How does the stocks market affect the Forex market? Well, the stock market per se does not affect the, the Forex market. There are two different um, segments altogether. There is no interrelation. So there are two different things. Um, from Hendrix, where does the money you invest on the stock markets go? <laughs> yeah, remember, you are not investing in the stock market. You're, the stock market is just a market. So when you are buying a second-hand car, the money goes to the one who is selling the car to you. So on the market, we did say that, you know, it's, you are buying from somebody who is an existing shareholder, an investor who has held the shares and is opting out, then you are coming in. So the money will go to that investor who is opting out, and then you assume the ownership of that particular share, uh, shares in that particular company. So your money doesn't go to the company, it doesn't go to the coffers or the stock exchange, Neither does it go to the brokerage firm, but it goes to the one who came to sell the shares that you will not even know. You don't know the one who is selling the shares to you, but the money goes to that person because I've told you, I've said that you are on the stock, stock market is a secondary market of the capital market. It's not a primary market. So whoever is selling takes the money. The same way you also sell your shares one day and take and rake in the money into your pocket. Okay. Now, Mami on, on Facebook, I think she joined in a bit late. She's asking us to touch on how to start buying shares again. I think if you can summarize that. Okay, so you have to engage the services of, us, of us, our services. You, know, you need to see me and um, we'll take you through the process. But basically, we will require that you complete a couple of forms because we need that information. And we also discuss with you what your investment pro, uh, investment objectives are because we need to know how much you want to invest. We need to know the, your investment horizon, which means that we need to know how long you want to do the investment. And we also need to know your risk appetite. If you are not, if you are someone who cannot take a lot of risk, then again, we'll advise you on which, what kind of investment to do. So we have to 
have an interaction with you. And once everything is set, then we go to the market to buy the shares for you and advise you accordingly. Okay, that's one. Um, another person who missed the first part of it um, is hoping us to retouch on the composite. The composite index is, is, is uh, indices that measures the performance of the entire market. So if we say the composite index is appreciating, it means that on average, shares on the stock market are, are appreciating. Or if the composite index is declining, then it means on average, the shares, the share prices are dropping. So you could have some share prices appreciating so much, but we could tell you that the composite index is dropping because it's working with average, you know, average prices. So it's a mechanism to measure the, 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 the whole market, you know, because you can see the performance of individual market, individual shares or stocks that are listed on the market or companies that are you know listed on the market but the entire market also needs to be measured to see if the market the, the entire market is doing well or is not doing well and the mechanism to me, to use to measure it is a composite index and we have the composite index and the financial instruments index as well those two mechanisms are the ones we use and the financial um financial stocks index measures only the financial stocks, but the composite index measures all the, the listed comp companies on the market. Okay. Um, so Priscilla also wants to know if the January effect also takes place in Ghana. Well, the January effect, I, I don't know exactly what, what she means. Um, um, the effect is when stock prices rise at the beginning of the year. There are factors. There are factors that um, affect price movements on on every market. So in every jurisdiction, people will react differently. So when we, you know, normally when we we come after the 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 U type break, activity is slow in all spheres of life. Businesses take time to pick up. The same applies to our market as well, you know. So we don't necessarily call it general effect. Well, if in quote that's what she's referring to, but it's it's, it's I'm I'm saying say that it hits almost everything in, in every sphere of the, of our lives. Okay. So um, another question from Samuel: How can he check his shares from the central securities depository? Well, um, statements are sent out periodically, but again, you can, you can call them, give your account number, and they will check it for you. Okay, that's great. So we're going to take two more questions, and I think that would be the end from here. Um, does SIC Brokerage have an online trading system? No, that's why I was saying that it's been worked on, and it will be launched in due course. Okay, and then another one from... Manuel, what are some of the best stocks to buy currently in Ghana? Well, um, I will hesitate to name any particular stock on this pla this platform because um, the stocks I could mention today might not necessarily be the same stocks that one has to buy maybe on Monday or Wednesday. So when you are ready with your money, then you'll be advised on which ones are doing well at that moment. Because overnight, a lot of things can change. So the factors that will inform me to say stock A is good now, buy it, might not be, those same factors might not apply maybe by Monday. So I wouldn't mention any source on this platform now. But when you have your money and you want to do the investment on Monday, come see us in the office and we'll give you the best of advice. Okay, so the final question for today is the composite index calculated on a simple average or weighted average basis? It's weighted average. Okay, that's it. Um, okay, one more final question. What do I need to register an account with your brokerage firm? You need um, an ID, a photo ID, a passport picture, the rest you complete the forms. That's it. Okay, that's great. Um, 
think we've exhausted majority of the questions. To all our participants, thank you for sending all of these questions in. There's a lot, and I tell you, if I should go through them, we will not be able to end this session today. Um, to Mr. Ofori, do you have any final comments before we end? Well, um, I will only advise that, you know, we should, no matter how meager we think our salaries are, we should put some aside. And putting some aside will save you one day. So come speak to us. We will tell you how to approach this. And, you know, we, we have already said that we don't have any minimum. So even with 50 Ghana cities every month, we will go a long way. Multiply that by one year, and then work out a small margin as capital gains on it. And then you see how much you'll be accumulating over a period of time. So I will entreat everybody listening to me now to come see us. We'll help you to be able to put something aside at the end of every month. That way, you will become financially independent on one day. You don't have to rely on people for you know, handouts all the time when, there is, when you, are, you have a little pressure. This is a time to make yourself comfortable going forward. Thank you. Thank you too, Mr. Ofori. Um, and to our viewers and listeners today, um, unfortunately, we had some technical challenges in admitting all participants. But the good thing is, um, this entire session will be uploaded onto our YouTube and Facebook channels. So you can go there and get to watch everything that transpired from the beginning. Um, we're going to organize another seminar closely related to this topic, and then we try and sort it out for all of you. Um, Thank you for joining our first meeting edition of Invest in GH webinar. Um, we entreat you to follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook, um, Instagram, and then YouTube, including WhatsApp, where we provide relevant information from time to time about the finance markets in Ghana. Um, we appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. Bye.